Alrighty, good morning. We are back at Barkensrug. Now, you guys remember from last year that we came here and did a video called Headshots Only. And that video did phenomenally well on YouTube. It got 350,000 views. So if you guys haven't seen that video, go check that out. I'll also link that for you at the end. Now also shortly after I hunt, this whole place burned to the ground, which was a complete shame. But Roland and his team have rebuilt it better than it was before. It's phenomenal. And once again, I want to thank you guys because we did a little fundraiser for them back then. So thank you to every single one of you that did contribute towards that. Anyway, so on today's menu, um, first of all is wet. If you listen, it's raining. Okay, I'm probably going to go change my outfit still. And um, speaking of the outfit, a bunch of you guys usually ask what kind of camo do I wear. I wear stuff called Sitka. It's not available in South Africa. I buy it when I go to the States and I bring it back. It's, it's a premium product, but man, is it freaking, it's ridiculously good. Anyway, so that's kind of where we are um, with regards to hunting. Uh, my friend Dirk is just giving me one of these through the... And <laughs> now he's waving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did get some footage of him in his red underpants this morning. But I will spare you guys that sight. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so about this specific hunt, and I, I, I use the term hunt. Yes, we're hunting, but we are doing a harvest. Okay, so it's going to be action packed. It's not going to be walk and stalk. So we're shooting for meat. I'm shooting for myself, for my family. I'm shooting, trying to fill my freezer. And then we've got some more hunts that I like to do, which is a walk and stalk type hunt. Now my brother's with me, so we're going to hopefully do some spotting scope things. But with the rain and the cameras, obviously doesn't make for a killer combo. Well, it does. It, it makes for a killing camera combo. Yeah, so we'll do our best to capture what we can. And it should be a fun day. We're going to also try and shoot some kudu later today. You actually see some, some kudu horns over here. And uh, they are completely wild. So they jump fences. They, they don't belong to anyone. So hopefully we'll make a move on kudu. I hopefully want to shoot at least two kudu on this hunt. So we'll be here for two days. And then we head back. Anyway, we're going to have some breakfast. We sighted in our rifles yesterday. I had to install a new Trigger Tech two-state diamond. Which came literally like... A couple of hours before we left so that was cool and uh, I had a zero shift just click here click there I'm gonna be shooting off my reticle as I always do with hunting we did yesterday shoot out a target at 400 yards we were hitting that successfully so rifles on but for me my sort of max distance for shooting headshots 200 meters that's where I kind of feel comfortable obviously conditions dependent um, anyway I'm gonna have some breakfast finish my coffee and I'll see you guys out in the felt felt is going to be Afrikaans word of the day that basically means out in the bush out in in the country okay lekker okay.
voy a pasar un poco para allá. We just had our first opportunity, we made a move, I saw two kudu down in this little valley here and uh, unfortunately it wasn't quite what we were looking for and they kind of got wind of us or saw us or whatever but it wasn't quite what we were hoping for. I was hoping to get a bit of eyes on them for a little bit longer so we could see if there was maybe a bull here but there wasn't so uh, we keep looking.
so that's a wrap for day one it was super fun we didn't shoot anything we had a couple of opportunities but you know we want a specific animal so we didn't we didn't shoot for the sake of shooting which is even though we have for a harvest I still wanted a specific animal we didn't get that opportunity we just wrapped up now the Sun is just sitting over there we were set up here hoping that some kudu would move in as the Sun goes down but the only thing we ended up seeing was a couple of daikirkis and steenbokis I think it was and uh, yeah and we saw how cold it can get in the Karua and it's not even it's not even dark yet so I'm gonna head back to the campsite have a rooster cook maybe a cast of light and uh, we'll see you guys in the morning Okay, day two. Today is a driven hunt. Uh, yesterday we ended up walking and stalking unsuccessfully, but that's okay. We got a lot of hunts planned for the year. Saw some springbok. We just got off the bucky and walked a little bit into the fell. Um, there's definitely a bunch of them heading down that way, not in our direction. We saw a couple of nice kudu this morning, but they're not on the menu for the day. So hopefully we'll have an action-packed day. Subscribe because hunting by itself is very difficult. And to make hunting videos is even harder, so we'd really appreciate if you smash the like, like I'm gonna smash a few springbok, and uh, subscribe. So, even though we had a pretty quiet morning, um, when things ended up happening, they happened very quickly. So we're running sort of a double rifle setup. Got my 223 Remington in the Radiant tripod over here, and uh, then I've got Sam, the 65 Sherman Mag, set up this way. So there was a group of them that moved through towards the back of me. I went prone with Sam at 200-ish, 
and then immediately I got on this rifle and another group had moved behind us. And as soon as the shot hit, I told my brother I shot two for one. And for whatever reason, we didn't take the camera when we went to load them up. But they were like literally in sync, like small spoon, big spoon, like as if you'd gone and you couldn't have put them down more perfectly. The one straight through the eye, out the other eye, and the other one like right in the temple. So it was, it was pretty cool. Um, anyway, so we've got, it's not even 12 o'clock yet, we've got three. We're hoping for probably about, I want two more, and then we're going to put my brother on the rifle. Um, and hopefully he can also get two. So, uh, yeah, it's been fun. It, I thought it, the morning was going to be a bust. But, uh, so far so good. It was a nice way to resurrect the morning. Okay, real quick. Um, we saw a lone ram walking into an opening here. And as soon as I put my UHD razor on it, it was evident that it's bleeding out the mouth. And, um, so we're gonna try. We can't get a shot at it from where we are. It's very far. But the wind is good, so we're gonna run. I'm gonna take my radian, run to a tree about 300 meters from here, and hopefully, hopefully we can put a move together to get this animal out of its misery. Spike, 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 see you there, someone in any water. As this guy came running towards us, the wounded buck, that other one like was in the head. And then we immediately panned to the right, we saw another two. We did see some other hunters off to the left, we waited for them to come over. I didn't even range him, guessed it at about 200 meters and it was, it was all she wrote. Okay guys, so maybe this next bit might be a bit graphic for you, but th this is hunting. So you can see this animal, we could clearly see the dry blood on its neck. So that had been shot before, and my shot is over there, but somebody else shot its bottom jaw off. Um, so when we look through it, we could see the blood coming out the mouth. Maybe don't film too much of that. Yeah, luckily we were able to to make it happen. Yeah, glad we could put this guy out of its misery because that was going to be a long day. And we also hadn't heard anything on the radio. But yeah, at least we, we got it down 
in a relatively quick space of time even though we ran we're about a thousand meters above sea level and my brother and i are both relatively fit and when we got to that tree where we shot from <laughs> we were both panting big time um but yeah to execute the shot under the pressure was still cool so you can see that shot came exited there and came in here from the back so it was shot from the back out to the front of its jaw yeah same buddy So we moved locations, we're in a different part of the farm now. My brother and I are sitting under this dead tree in the sun. Um, something also died under this tree, so you won't, you won't see the smell. I'm okay, he's experiencing it a bit, a bit worse than I am. So as we got here, we had some action immediately, but didn't shoot anything. Because we kind of had set up in the wrong spot, then we moved to this tree. One thing that is incredibly difficult to do in the Karua is ranging animals. So even though I've got the, one of the best handheld range finders, the Razor 4000, the fact that you're so low on the ground, if you're ranging stuff, it's picking up bushes. So I know that something's not at 160 meters because I can see it's at 500 plus. So that's been a challenge. And the other challenge is there's not a lot of landmarks because everything is kind of low and flat. So you kind of have to rely a little bit on experience but if you've hunted this sort of terrain, you know that the lower you are to the ground, the, the harder it is to do that sort of depth perception. Anyway, we drilled two more headshots, one at the back there and one towards the right here. Um, both of them down immediately. And then sort of as we were looking at another group, my brother noticed, he thought it was a cat. And he noticed some ears running. And on these Karua farms, they've got a big jackal problem. And the farmers are always too happy if you can shoot a jackal. In fact, they're so happy that they, they comp you one of your animals. So one of your animals is free. So I was able to maneuver the radiant around, jack up the legs just like this. And I was able to get a little bit more height. And I shot it straight through a bush. And we ended up getting one of those too, which was super cool. So one free springbok, which is really cool. Another thing that I cannot state on this specific hunt has been such a game changer is the Radian. I'm shooting the ball head model because one of my friends has loaned my leveling head model, but this has been, I mean, anything I need. Because it just gets you high enough off the ground that you can clear these brush, you know, the low bushes and the tall grass. Because there is no way in hell that you will shoot an animal prone here. It's not happening. Unless you do like... NRL style over the branch of the tree or something or, sh or shoot it standing or kneeling it's going to be very very difficult to shoot something at any form of distance 200 meters through this low grass I just think it's almost next to impossible so the tripods have been an absolute game changer we actually have four of the guys on the hunt are hunting with radiant tripods so they are and we're hearing the shots go all over this valley because it's other than me talking it's deathly quiet anyway but it's been it's been a good successful day despite a very slow start to the morning um, forgot our sunblock so we're trying to hide as much as we can from the sun um, anyway if you haven't subscribed already you're really dropping the ball so make sure you do that and um yeah we, apologies we're not really shooting a lot with the trigger cam but my brother's doing a great job of getting the the hips uh, of course i am shooting with the bat and the trigger cam is currently on on a different rifle so i'm shooting the bumblebee in 6.5 Sherman Magnum and it is absolutely wrecking the animals um, like the kind of stuff we don't want to show you um, so uh, yeah 
we got the 223 of the trigger cam maybe we'll break that out again but i'm really enjoying shooting the bad rifle and it's proven to be a freaking laser beam also at this point in time in the video i'd like you guys to spot the new apw product that we're testing out um, but more on that a little bit later Sitter. Lagt sig. Strax får du inte. Nej, kiss. Ligesom at blive grænset op til at blive grænset to år fint. Det er sådan to år fint, ja. Det er da også for mig. Fuck. Sick shit der. Okay, so we were just about to call it a day. I've got the Sherman mag with me now, but I actually switched to my 223. And we shot three, four, three. Doof, doof, doof. In a row, about 150 meters apart from each other, all in the head. I think they're all on camera, so we did our best. And just like that, another awesome hunt at Barkensrug comes to an end. Today started out slow, but as you guys would have seen, it freaking kicked up a notch once we got going. We, I think we shot 13 Springbok. The farmer wanted us to thin out the herd a little bit because it's very dry here, as you can see behind me. So yeah, amazing. I want to give a shout out to my brother Gijs for filming, you know. Hunting by itself is very difficult, but to capture everything on film is even more difficult. And we kind of have the school of thought like we're coming out to make a hunting video so if even if we and we had a lot of opportunities today where we didn't shoot because we weren't we wouldn't get in on film or it wouldn't work out right so thank you very much to him for coming out and guys make sure you go follow him on instagram too that would be really cool i had a lot of fun barkensrug is a freaking incredible place to hunt if you're in cape town in the Karua, roland and his team are amazing the facility here they rebuilt after it burnt down is even better than it was before and that's saying something because it was freaking incredible the first time I was here and now it's just, it's ridiculous. Um, it's very, very tidy and it's, it's neat and that's how I like to do things. So yeah, the guys are busy processing all the animals at the back there so I should probably join them, grab a cast of light. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Unfortunately, no kudu, but I am going hunting in about two weeks. So if you want to see that, make sure you are subscribed. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Bye.